So today we're going to talk about um, a topic that's pretty popular, that uh, is very powerful, but there's a question that surrounds it. So today we're going to talk about the top three answers, do I need hinge cutting? So the top three, do I need hinge cutting answers? And, um, and that pertains to a lot of folks that uh, watch this channel and a lot of folks around the country. Um, there are certain properties that need it. It's a very powerful tool. And there's also properties that uh, folks are implementing that hinge cutting that, uh, that I'm going in, finding it, and finding that is the root of the cause of the uh, issues that the folks are having on the property and we're getting rid of it. So knowing the uh, proper steps to hinge cutting um, before we start this habitat, uh, 2021 habitat season, because hinge cutting is, is a lot of times at the forefront of a lot of folks um, in their uh, goal of trying to get some side cover on the ground. And like I said, it's a very powerful, very, very powerful uh, tool to use, but there's three uh, three things here that we're going to discuss and they're kind of answers on do I need, need hinge cutting or do I not? So the first thing the first thing that we're going to talk about is the uh, is browse. Now a lot of folks use the uh, use the terminology of hinge cutting for canopy and to me that's uh, that's something that we're going to talk about more in, in depth in some videos coming up. We're actually going to do some infield hinge cutting uh, videos this year, uh, more so than we did last year. Uh, timing wise, trying to discuss that, how the, to properly do that so everybody's safe. But is the browse uh, correct is the, big, is the big answer. Now when you go into a property, a lot of folks say, well, how do you know if the browse is correct? Now, it's pretty, once you get uh, accustomed to looking for browse and appreciating how powerful a uh, browse is in a deer's intake, in our area here, you know, from the, uh, from the Midwest North, 80 90 percent of a deer's intake uh, depending on your you know if you're in that snow belt or not uh, 80 to 90 percent of that deer's intake is woody browse you know that comes in hardwood shrub tips that comes in a lot of different forms but being correct is it has to be correct uh, stem count and it has to be reachable for the deer that's where the hinge cutting portion portion of this is tied into is a lot of folks fail is uh, when they do hinge cuts um, after they, they believe that they had found an area that needs it and they're trying to create bedding or side cover, they are doing the high hinge cuts. And to me, uh, it's, it's a, um, there's some folks uh, that have reached out before, you know, they swear, swear up and down that uh, high hinge cuts are, are profitable and, and uh, you know, they, they create some of, the, some of the deer that they had seen, uh, you know, they, they use them more. Now, there are certain times of the year that maybe they'll, they would use them more for, let's say, shade. But guys, in the summer, I'm not trying to build habitat to keep deer alive in the summer. There, there, is, there is habitat everywhere across, uh, across your, your area, across the deer, the whitetail range in general. And they, they do not need the aid of, uh, of the hinge cutting for, um, for shade, if you will, during, during the summer months. We're trying to build this stuff so it's it's correct in the fall going into winter so you can not only use it to place the deer where you hope to place them so they have that intake when they need it during the fall but also survival in the winter if you don't have it in the winter and the side cover isn't correct and they don't have their browse in the right place they will move to find it um, even if you're in an area that doesn't uh, the deer don't move to yard uh, they they will move to find the correct browse the object is, is to have that in the bedding areas reachable but that is the that is the focal point that you try to focus on when you walk on these properties is making sure that your browse is correct and if it's if it's not if the browse the stem count is if your popple isn't that five six seven thousand stem count per acre if your oak uh your you, you did some you, you know you did some um, uh, logging and your hardwood regeneration that uh stem count isn't coming off those uh, stump jumping is what i call it you know it's not jumping completely off those stumps. And if you have one of those about, uh, such as the property that I did the video on the other day there, the tour on that 160, it's very sparse. And you know, there's browse, but it's, but it's spread out all over and it's not, uh, it's not focused in the right areas. So is the browse correct? Do they have enough browse to, to sustain them through the winter months, the fall and the winter months? And also, is it in the right place? Meaning, is it in your bedding areas? Is it in your transition areas? And is it surrounded 
in those uh, around those food plots, those evening feeding points, to reach their uh, woody browse requirements. So that is the first thing that you have to focus on before you even you know decide to pick up the saw. You need to focus on it, do I have the browse in the right areas, the right amount, and then you can uh, and then you can kind of pick and choose uh, how much that you need and where you need to place it. Species of uh, trees that you're trying to hinge cut and also the sides is a big is number two here and that's that's a big uh, portion of hinge cutting the species um, a lot of folks uh, you know just cringe when you decide to cut oak um, you know especially white oak red oak what i kind of my rule of thumb is on species is if your property obviously is a, is a property that you know in the UP of Michigan or uh, you know Western Wisconsin or parts of Minnesota or even out in you know northern part the northeast part of the country Vermont let's say if your uh, oak requirement isn't plentiful on your on your property in other words you don't have any white oaks and it's, they're not dropping acorns then you have to really you have to be creative on what you're going to hinge cut where because obviously the oak is a very powerful powerful piece of the uh, the, the intake as well as is it's it's part of that mass crop um, so you don't want to you know have a bedding area with the only oak tree on your property and drop the oak tree um, whether it's a large oak tree or if it's a six to eight inch oak tree uh, you you don't want to to take the only oak that you have on the property now. That's a situation where habitat comes into it, where you should be planting more oaks, but not an overabundance of oaks, which is something else we're going to talk about in a separate video. But so the, the species, I, I like, love to hinge cut oaks, red, red, or red oak especially, uh, white oak, um, cherry. And, and the reason is, is yes, those are marketable timber logs, but if we're focused on whitetail habitat, and TSI or just whitetail habitat, then that will play into kind of the program here. Um, being respectful of the, I will always try to be respectful of the landowner uh, in my teachings as well about that marketable timber value because that is something strong. But if you're building, if you're building habitat and you lack that habitat and that side cover in a bedding area, your oak trees <clears throat> at a certain size, not not uh, you no know, huge oaks that are. Um, you know, supplying tons and tons of, of uh, you know, that mass crop, that acorn crop on the ground. But your six, eight, ten inch oak trees do way, way more for you on the ground or at deer level than they do standing in the air. There's a study out there, and uh, it was actually done by a professor down at the, uh, the uh, Mississippi State University. They did a study years ago, and it's a proven fact that and a lot a lot of folks are going to agree with this but it's a proven fact that your an oak tree properly hinge cut on the ground supplies twice the amount of mass crop browse requirements as a immature oak or an oak in general standing and dropping acorns and the reason for that is is the the you have to you have to take into consideration it's not only just the mass crop that that oak is dropping but it's it, as far as acorns. But it's the uh, when that happens, you you're battling the you know, the squirrels get a hold of it. There's a whole bunch of other uh, animals, creatures that you know walk in the whitetail woods, if you will, that uh, that are fighting for those acorns as well. You know the turkeys pick them apart, they crack them. They um, you know if it's a if it's a, a beech tree, let's say if you're all those nuts on the ground, all that stuff is is fighting for that sought after acorn now. In, a, in the whitetail habitat spectrum of things, when you hinge cut these trees in these bedding areas, you're placing that down at deer, deer level, and the entire and the entire uh, trunk of the tree, the top of the tree, if done correctly, the right time of the year, that stays alive, and you're you're regenerating um, you're, all those shoots off that uh, trunk of that tree and in, in, in the top. That is regenerating for eight, 10 years. Uh, down the road and longer. I've got trees out there that have uh, on properties that we did years ago um, and properties that I've set foot on that you can tell that are, that, are, uh, that something has been done or maybe it's a uh, you know uh, the uh, good Lord created a hinge cut on the tree but the, the you know the trees are that big the shoots now are that big off the top of the off the top of the uh, hinge cuts and 
what that is, guys, is that kind of ties into the next the next point here is the silver dollar size. Anything along that trunk that, that is over silver dollar size that's on the ground, any stem count that, that hardwood regeneration that's on the ground that's over stem count or uh, that's over uh, silver dollar size, I'm sorry, any of that that's over sil silver dollar size that is, and the reason I say silver dollar size is usually that puts your brows of that tree, whether that's uh, popple regeneration, whether that's uh, oak regeneration, hardwood regeneration in general, what that does is that puts the brows up at your, you know, six, five, six, seven foot in the air. Once that happens, that tree is no longer, other than, uh, other than cover as far as camouflage, uh, that tree is no good for, for the browse, the browse requirement of the deer. So a lot of folks make that mistake is looking into something and, and seeing this, you know, popple tangled mess. And if that's in a transition area or if that's outside of where you're trying to uh, meet the requirement, then it's, it's good. Thick is obviously good when you're, you're, you're dealing with uh, whitetails. But the species and the size are a huge, huge uh, tool, something to, you have to focus your attention on. If they get to the size of that pen, let's say, and they're along that uh, top of that trunk, you have the opportunity to go through there and in those bedding areas that we'll talk about here in a quick second, you go down through there and you're able to hinge those down or you're able to uh, cut those off so that new shoot, that, that uh, properly hinge cut oak tree is way, way more profitable inside of when we're talking about deer habitat is way more profitable uh, waist cut hinge cuts. So that entire, so you've got, uh, if not the entire, you've got 80% of the tree that's reachable by the, by the deer. All that is, is what promotes deer uh, habitat and, you know, and uh, reaches those browse intakes. If it's, it's standing, do I leave some oak standing in bedding areas once in a while? Yeah, I do. If I, if I, if I pick, if I find a really great white oak tree that's in there, and it's that you know 10, 12, and it looks like that thing is is producing a lot of acorns. And I can see on the ground that from the last year that it's all dug up around it and stuff. Those aren't bad in an, in uh, in those bedding areas. The problem is you don't want too many oaks inside of the bedding areas. If you have too many oaks, live producing acorn oaks, dropping acorn oaks in a bedding area, what happens is is that becomes a destination feed location. So it totally interrupts your cycle of, of transition on a property. The smaller the property is, the worst case scenario that could possibly be. The more food that you add to a property, the more habitat or the more bedding area that you have to have attached to it. Uh, like I've always said, if you're not going to promote the habitat along with your food plots, then don't plant your food plots at all. Just focus on habitat outside of planting food plots. Um, so that that's a that's a, you know a big a big topic there. Uh, so hopefully that answers some questions. So number three is the most important, the, the the best answer, the biggest topic that I can talk about when we're talking about hinge cutting. Now we got to determine this real quick so I don't get a bunch of obviously hate mail here. Screening around food plots as far as when it's used in a in a bedding uh, area or if your bedding area is on one side and you want to screen the other side of the food plot that you, you don't have to walk past, then obviously you can use that as far as side cover or screening or a, a edge feathering on the edge of food plots. That's fine. But if you, if you have been, ever been told that you're, you're, you can use screening, you can use hinge cutting for screening, then you have to walk by it because it's a, it's a uh, situation where they're trying to block the road off from people seeing in, they're trying to, uh, you know, this this uh, situation right here is, you know, this design that I've, that I've done uh, is, you know, parking down here in the bottom, obviously, off the road and walking up the entire east side of a, of a property. This is kind of laid out after, kind of in, in uh, conjunction with the property that I did a few years ago that's a perfect fit for this topic. Um, walking up the east side of the property, obviously, this would be a west wind situation or a northwest wind uh, stand and getting into the, the stand locations and um, being told that you can all the way along this line right here where you're walking so you can screen this from this buck bedding area. This was a, this was a 40, not a square 40, kind of a long 40. So the, the gentleman was told that, you know, lay a bunch of these trees down along here. So they're at that, that uh, you know, that hip or head height. 
and uh, that'll help you get down your the edge of your property so you can get into a stand. First, there was a couple of things wrong with this picture. One, the stand was up on the food plot, so we corrected that. The second thing was, is all of these hinge cuttings through here, the, the, the gentleman, he knew that he had been busted, but he didn't really know the strength of what was, what was happening. So, all the way along this edge right here, if you, if you decide to hinge cut, any time that you lay a tree on the ground and you're trying to promote the hinge, hingeable aspect of it, it's trying to keep it alive, you are promoting bedding. So you, you are not only, um, you are not, if, if you want that side cover, if you want that wall, then you need to create a berm, you need to create a brush berm, you need to, to kill it so it's not alive. So there, the food value is not attached to the tree. So in other words, you need to flush cut it. You do not need to hinge cut it. Uh, because what was happening on this gentleman, we found like six or eight beds all the way along through here. Yes, they, they might not have been right on, the, right on the hinge cut themselves, but it created edge and there was beds all the way through here. So every time that he walked into the property, and this was kind of a, 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 th a thick, uh, higher stem count area to begin with, and then the swamp is what created the rest of this uh, edge that we're going to talk about. But he, you know, he went every time that he accessed the farm to hunt this on a west wind, and it was a it was a perfect area to hunt, um, beautiful uh, set, you know, setup. But he was ruining the hunt before he got in there because he'd been lied to and told that you can use uh, hinge cutting for screening. So. And like I said, that number sounds ridiculously high, but 90% of the properties that I go on, um, I can think of a dozen conversations that I've had on properties that I'm going to be on this year that came up that folks have used in the past, have used uh, screen or hinge cutting for screening, and it's an absolute disaster. So, uh, like I said, screening, edge feathering on food plots, that's a different story. Don't ever be told that uh, using hinge cutting is to screen your accesses in and out of a tree stand is a good idea. It's not a good idea. It's a, it's a recipe for disaster. When you hear of the hinge cutting term, a lot of times that hinge cutting is, is um, all focused around, around bedding. But there's a powerful tool here, and this is something that we're really gonna touch on, like I said in another video coming up here, along these transition areas. When you're dealing with no, no uh, contour to help the situation out, and you really need to define a line of travel. Hinge cutting is a good tool, but there's a, there's a situation that you need to keep in mind. Here is if you have the correct hingeable trees, what you can do to create there to promote these lines of travel is you can actually uh, hinge cut these trees down along this, along this transition area. So on this situation, obviously we don't, we don't need to do it on both sides. We just needed to do it on the outside, so we hinged a bunch of these, and as you can see, they're not laying away from the uh, away from the trail. They're actually laying with the trail, uh, so it wasn't too tight, but it's creating this line of travel up through here. But what happened is, and we did this all the way along. We did this all the way along here, obviously, and these these uh, lines guys are obviously trees that are down. The the issue here to take to take into consideration is this. What a lot of folks get, uh, you know, wrapped up into and, and told that they can do is when you're tr creating these lines of travel or promoting these lines of travel and, and creating that edge and getting, getting the sunlight to the forest floor for one, creating that edge is you can run it right past the, the stand and because you want that to, to, to uh, continue past the tree stand. And that is something that you really have to watch that I see a lot of clients uh, are, are doing themselves or uh, folks in the industry are designing uh, that are really getting guys into trouble is because these, these hinge cuts that you're doing along the travel, uh, the transition area, are too close to the stand location. And what you're doing is it's kind of acting as the screen would out here is you're laying these trees down and then the next thing you know you're promoting bedding areas too close to your tree stands. Now, it's not a vast amount of bedding area that you're creating in these in these uh, hub style bedding areas or in your buck bedding areas where you're coming through here and you might you know tip six or eight trees down here and then the, this might have 30 trees down in it. It's not that volume, it, you know. It's a it's a tree every 30 feet or 20 feet, let's say. But if you're not going to if if you have to create these along this way, then you need to kill those trees. You need to. Uh, stump cut them. You need to lay them down what I call slash or lop the tops down every two foot you run the saw through it so when the snow load hits it actually crushes that. That's tied into some transition videos that I've had 
Uh, so this, anything that's my rule of thumb is 100 yards, but obviously contour comes into that, the, the density of the property all comes into that. Um, you really have to just make sure that, uh, that you can get in and out of the stand location and those deer are not going to be um, to be bedded in those tops or in that uh, hinge, hingeable tree. Unless that is for uh, screening or edge feathering around those food plots, do not believe that you can use that as screening for um, access in and out of your farm. So take that into consideration the next time that you're, you're trying to figure out if you need hinge cutting at all. So these are the top three answers for hinge cutting. Do I need hinge cutting on my property?